Hi, so do you remember when we talked about access control mechanism for the first time? I know it's been a while, but I have a treat for you now. I created some code from one of the access control models we talked about. The one I talked about in the start was called Bill La Padula, or someone called it Bill La Padula, something like that. All right, so. I have a code example, <clears throat> I know I shared it before, but I'm gonna showcase it now and talk about it a bit in detail, and then let's see how far we get. Before we talk about the code, we need to look at the, the overall model containing the Bill Lepidula confidential model. All right, so I know this is called <clears throat> a mandatory X control model, and it is also probably used mostly for military use. However, I would like to say that that is not entirely true because many systems these days do actually build upon something like this. If you need to keep something very secret, and I mean like very secret, this could be a security model for you. All right, so the detail about the Bellepedula model is that you could not write down so something from the top cannot write down and something from beneath cannot read up. So you are able to write up, so you can write from confidential to secret, let's say that. Um, but if then you are confidential, you cannot read what you wrote on the secret level. Now that is an issue that is not cared for in the Bellepedula model, however, Today, we're not going to talk about the flaws or the missing parts in the model. I'm just going to briefly introduce to you again, so you remember everything about it before I showcase the code. All right, so I loaded up the code and I'm bringing it in, in right now to the screen. So first of all, I hope you can see the text. I'm going to try and zoom on it as much as I can. Um, in my void main, now this is Java, okay? So I, I created a small example of the Bill model in Java. Now I wanna say that I didn't fully implement it, so it only goes to the part of reading, not writing, and a few other things. However, it is not that hard to extend it now, if you wish to. This could be a really good exercise for you if you wanna train your security model exercise skills or just your Java skills. Obviously, I have a class called Operational Manager right here that I instantiate. And let's take a look at the Operational Manager class. So basically, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. It's just a class containing some objects, now books, database, password, whatever it is, right? And there's some subjects, <clears throat> and that is, of course, some people, uh, users, and so on. So I pre-populated the lists with some different objects. It's just called a secret and I'm giving it some labels called alpha and beta. And we can see that I have my all objects here. So that's, that is the actual list. Then I add something to it and it's a new object which I give some arguments of secret and a longer argument which is a has set um, containing two labels. So the confidential label is secret and the labels is alpha and beta. And basically I create three objects in total. Other one is top secret with the label alpha and the next one is confidential with the label alpha again. Now if you're new to Java, I know that this probably look a bit scary. However, if you are new to Java, this is maybe not the right video for you. Then I suggest <clears throat> you go and look at some Java beginner videos or advanced videos or intermediate or how far you are. Just a tad more down, we have our subjects and this is where our users uh, are created. Let me just see, yes, this is Bob. So <clears throat> I'm saying Bob is secret and Bob has the secret access level and can read whatever that is on secret and below with the label called alpha. And then we go for Robert, 
got the same thing here with labels of beta and so on. <clears throat> and down below, I have some access tryouts, which is basically just a nested for loop. And this is just a showcase functionality, this right here I marked on the screen. This is not the actual way you might gonna do it in the real world because I'm looping through all of them. When you are accessing one, you know, object, when a subject is ac accessing an object, it's usually singular. So you, you're probably gonna fetch it in some smarter way. Now, this is just to showcase all and everything. And if you look at below, I ran the code and you can basically see that Robert, this is so secret. This is a message inside the very secret resource <laughs> and James and so on. So we can see that what they can actually read. All right. so. This of course requires some explanation. So I'm gonna go back here and say, so what's in all the other classes? P object and P uh, subject are both classes we use as types for the list. So this is where we have our normal, or I'm gonna call it Pojo object, plain old Java object with some uh, class variables. It's basically just some some <clears throat> class, a string and a set. And then I'm just, yeah, basically, instantiating it and we've got some setters and some some getters and and I and I'll show what it is. The subject class is basically just the same. Uh, nothing different here. You should probably be able to see it right now. The security label is just an enum with alpha beta gamma and the security level is basically just uh, an enum again with some um, security levels. The messages generated from the uh, for loops down below here is originating from the top, where I actually save this is so secret, this is more secret, and this is not so secret. If we're going down here, we can see that I'm trying to <clears throat> basically run through all of the users. So basically, it says that. Robert, James, Bob, and Robert and James. So let's see, I have users called Lars, and Lars is a top secret with a beta access. Um, so if we look at the top secret here, for example, we can see that the object number two got an alpha access, and the only one that got top secret with alpha is James. So if we look at the output below, we will see that James can read the object, which of them I think it's called, I should probably give it some bit of naming. Um, there we go. This is more secret. So James can read this. That's the one, right? So we do not see Lars, uh, which is right here, even though that he got the, the, the top secret level. He doesn't have the label of alpha, he only has the label of beta, which is the way that the build of Padula model works. So it is a confidential level attached with some label level. Now, I know many people say that this sounds the same, that you have some confidential level and some label level. In theory, when you think about it, it is very different. But if you just have a glance at it very fast, I understand it might look very similar to each other. So running this code, I'm just gonna do it again for you to see that it works. It's gonna give me exactly the same output and that's about it. So what if I went around and say, I wanna create a new user. So I'm gonna copy paste this, go down here and say, I'm gonna create a subject five. It's gonna be, uh, let's say a, um, a top secret. And let's see what kind of security labels do we have. We have alpha, beta and gamma. We haven't used the gamma one, so Anyways, I'm gonna make Suzanne and I'm gonna give her, uh, let's see, did I already create that secret of a beta? I did, a top secret beta, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna create Suzanne with a top secret alpha and beta. Basically, it's a copy paste from the fourth user, so I do not need to add anything here. So I'm just gonna run the code. 
What I should see now is that Suzanne is on the output list reading all of three. This is so secret, this is more secret, and this is not so secret, which is the three objects that we create in the top here. We can see the text. Basically, this is just a rough uh, demonstration of one of the features behind Bella Padula or how you could actually program it. Uh, the actual meat and the bone is, is, I would say that some would argue that it's the two statements right here, asking if the security level is higher or equal to the object's level. So it is basically the subject, the user, and the user could be other things than a, a person. It could also be a program and so on. But um, so, so for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna call the user. So the user is, does the user have a higher or equal to security level, which has been extracted right here as numbers uh, to the object level. And this is required on the Bella Padula model. <clears throat> okay, so we're also gonna check the security labels which is a bit more chunky, I would say, probably a better way in Java. I couldn't find one when I did it. However, I'm basically gonna say I have my, I have my um, uh, subject here, and then I'm gonna say get all security labels. And if, if one of them is containing or contained by uh, the subject of the PO, which is the object, I know this is a bit confusing, then it basically means that the, the user does have the security labels that the object is bound by, or how we're gonna say it. And if so, the two conditions are met, then we can do the get name on the PS. So we're getting the name, this is Susanna Bob Robert. And then we're gonna say show secret message, which is the text down here below. So that is really, everything there is to say about the small and easy implementation of Bella Padula model in Java. If you want to extend this with writing stuff, you know, <clears throat> basically you, you could try and create some extra functionality down here below and, um, and test it with uh, outputting on, on L sentences, for example, to see whenever they do not have, have access, you're gonna learn about it. And then when you learned about that, you're gonna remove the L sentences or the L clauses, whatever you're gonna call it. Um, so creating write permissions would be adding some write stuff to the uh, class here. And that could be something you, would like to write to a subject. So you need to give access to, to some sort of object through a an argument in a method you create, for example, in, in this class. You don't necessarily have to use this class. You can also create a new class to call writer, writer, whatever, I'm okay, call writer. I know I'm not a big fan of, of the word manager all the time, but you can call it write manager, whatever I'm gonna call it. And then um, whenever you have the, the, the proper access set up, and you want to write to a certain object, then you're going to feed the subject and the object to the writer manager. And then it, it, it will look at the permissions once more and then grant access and write the actual message to the object. That could be one way of doing it. It is not that difficult to create. I say create one, uh, even create a video and put it in, in the link below. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to comment on it and I'm going to show a point to it from my channel if you, if you wish to. All right, so let's just go back a bit to the same picture again. So what we looked at now is the actual reading part that I created. Now, I didn't create the writing part. So what I really showed you is that we can read up, sorry, we can not read up, we can read down and we can read our own level. And if you wish to, you can look at the code I shared it on my Dropbox and you can find it in the link below behind the video. So I hope you liked the video this time and you will subscribe, like, and if you wanna hit the bell to get future notifications, that is a really good idea. All right, create a comment. I will most definitely write back to you. See you again.